Diana Calloway. Welcome to Charter Local Edition Northwest. Today we're in Olympia, Washington, and we're talking about the legislative issues that matter to you. My guest today is a new time representative, Tom Dent from Moses Lake. Thank you Thank for you. joining us. Thank you very much. My pleasure. You are a business owner. You're a pilot. You do some crop dusting, and you've brought forth a bill that you think will bring some value to our state. I have uh, my first bill that I dropped is uh, about to do with aircraft excise tax, House Bill 1526. And what, what 1526 will do, and our aircraft excise tax in the state of Washington when it was first implemented, the excise tax went into the aeronautical fund. And it was used to fund airports, maintain airports, things of this nature. Mm -hmm. Well, along the way, the legislature kind of swept some of that money. And we're at the point now to where 90% of the money goes in the general fund oh. and 10% goes in the legislative fund. So, you know, the simplicity of my bill, the simple part is just give it back, okay? But my argument to give it back is a little more complex. It's about $640,000 in the biennium. That's, that's all the money it is. But we can take that money, we take the $640,000 and we can leverage it against the Federal Aviation Administration grant program for airports. And they will give us $9.3 million for our 640,000 lever. Okay? Well, that's a large So now sum. we have about $10 million. So what we have in this state, in the state of Washington, is 134 public use airports. Mm -hmm. and 64 are Mernipius airports, which means they can receive federal funding. The other 70 are small airports that do not. So we can take our $10 million and we can use that on our Mernipius airports. So the $10 million we put into projects such as paving, you know, maybe new lights, approach systems, et cetera, along with, so our B&O taxes and our sales taxes that we will accumulate on our $10 million will return to the general fund $730,000. So that's a, that's a net gain of about $90,000, plus the other money that we have in the aeronautical account can go to working on the 70 airports that can't receive federal funds. So for aviation, it's a win-win program, yeah. and uh, I'm really excited about it. Well, it makes a lot of sense mathematically, the way you've explained it. How is it being received? Well, we had a, we had a great hearing in appropriations. Uh, they, uh, we had several people, I think eight or ten people come to testify. It was great. We had lots of good information. Most of the people have... have uh, you know, understand the simplicity of it. I mean, it really is simple if you think about it. And, and the bill itself, you know, I have sponsors on both sides of the aisle. I have 20 sponsors on this bill and, and from both sides of the aisle. So, you know, that part's going well. But it is a fiscal bill, okay? So, and the issue is, um, you know, obviously we have some issues with money here. So some of the folks are a little bit reluctant to give up the initial $640,000, even though we've shown where it's going to come back in, in greater amount. So that's our, that's our challenge at the moment, is trying to get it, you know, and to understand. And uh, it's, uh, it wasn't passed out of committee because it's a fiscal bill. It's a bill that's necessary to in, implement the budget, NTIB. So that's where it's at right now, and we're trying to negotiate to get it in the final budget. I wish you good luck with those well, thank efforts. Thank you very much. And you're also concerned about more funding and more care for people with mental illnesses in our state. I am. I, I understand mental illness with our young people, and it's, it's a serious issue in, the, in our society today. And so many of these issues can be handled very simply, but we do need some funding and we do need some help with that. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, real, uh, I'm a real proponent of mental health funding and, and helping some of our less fortunate members of society. Well, and also I think uh, nationwide everyone is concerned about when these issues escalate into violence. Yes, th this is exactly true. And, and that's something we can help with. We can deal with it before this violence. And so what would you like to see done? Well, the first thing, I, you know, I'm a big proponent of Joel's Law, you know, which came across the House floor, you know, early on in the session. It was actually my first vote in, since I was in the House of Representatives, and it went out of the House 98 to nothing, and I was proud of that. I made a, uh, I made a speech, my first floor speech on, on Joel's Law, oh. which, uh, you know, it turned... Um, you know, being new here, I wasn't sure what to expect, but uh, it, it was, it's been real exciting to be part of it. I'm not a sponsor on the bill. I, I didn't learn about it until the day before we voted on it, but it's a great bill and we're still working to get it passed. So I'm just, this is things that what Joel's Law can do for us is if we have a, a, a member of our family that is not doing well and we know they're not doing well, and maybe they've been in, institutionalized, so a parent or a guardian can petition the courts to keep them a little bit longer, at least until we can have them better uh, analyzed because the parents, the family, usually know more and can understand their children than you know, a mental health professional. All right. So. Thank you for joining us. Thank we you. We appreciate you being here. This is Tom Dent and I'm Dana Cowley. You're watching Charter Local Edition Northwest.